Welcome church family and guests. We are so excited to have you with us today. If you are a visitor, we would love to get to know you a little bit better. You can text FFWBC to 77411. Thank you for coming today. We hope you enjoy the rest of the service. Your faithful giving is making a difference in our church and in the community. Help us keep the mission moving forward by giving today at hazevillefreewill.org slash give or drop your offering in the offering boxes in the lobby. Starting on February 4th, we will have the Grief Share Support Group every Saturday through April 29th at 10 a.m. Help and encouragement after the death of a spouse, child, family member, or friend. This group is open to anyone in the community. For questions, please call Sherry at 706-896-7975. The Mana Food Distribution will be here at the church on February 9th. Volunteers, please be here by 10.30 a.m. The distribution will be from 12 to 2. For more information, please see Terry and Gary Wallace. Mark your calendars for the Valentine's Banquet on February 11th at 6 p.m. in the Family Life Center. Sign-up sheets will be in the lobby. The Christian Unity Revival is coming up on February 19th through the 24th. Prepare your hearts for unity in 23. Flyers will be available in the lobby to pass out to your family and friends. The Browders will be singing here at the church on February 26th at 11 a.m. Please make plans to attend. Don't miss this. The Scribe starring Paul Pitts has been rescheduled for April 23rd at 6 p.m. The Scribe is an unforgettable, dramatic musical presentation of the life of Christ as seen through the eyes of a Roman centurion soldier who himself becomes a believer through the testimony of Simon Peter. Hi, I'm Crystal Rumfelt. And I'm Sally Cody. And we'd like to invite you to the Cherished Women's Conference starting March 31st and going through April 1st. So Friday evening, the conference will begin. And then again on Saturday morning, we'll have a breakout sessions with lunch provided and Saturday evening service. The cost will be $40 if you register beforehand and then it will be $45 at the door. Sponsorship is available for anybody who would like to help donate. So we hope to see you all there. Once again, thank you for coming today. Please join us as we begin to worship and praise Jesus together. Good evening. That was weak. Good evening. Isn't it good to be in the Lord's house tonight? All of you stand together and join us, and we're going to do our best to sing a little bit tonight and uh, just praise the Lord and worship. Thank you for being here. What a beautiful evening, beautiful day. Good looking group here tonight. Thank you for being here in the house of God.
long years ago. We'll do our we're going to do our little prayer a little bit different. And um, how many of you have been enjoying the services for the last several weeks? Oh, give him praise! Oh, we welcome him into this place tonight. I'm telling you, it's just been special. And how many of you got to go over and eat before church tonight? Can I see your hand? All right. Praise the Lord. We're going to keep an eye on you. <laughs> but we are thankful for the people that have worked in there and prepared that. And just because you didn't eat don't mean that you can't give a donation. You sure can do that. And uh, we'll, show, we'll show some stuff later on. Um, not tonight with, with Honduras. I didn't get a chance to get... Something at the end of the service will show you a few things that will help you and that will encourage you to continue to give to the work that's going on. And we are so excited to be able to be here again. And I think that most of you would agree with me that prayer has kind of been the theme lately. Um, 
when we, when we prayed at the end of uh, service the other Wednesday night, and we got together in little pockets and began to, to share one with another, I want to tell you something. A little bit of heaven fell. I, it was special. And, and I was just waiting on, on Jerry back there to start shouting. And, and you know what that does to the church, it strengthens the church. Not only does it strengthen the church, it strengthens the spiritual fiber between Christians. You know, Buddy Matheson, he'll stand at the door on Sunday mornings. And he'll greet people. He can't half hear what you're saying a lot of the time. But I'm going to tell you, we was in that circle the other night, and he heard every word every man said and asked for prayer. And then he gave a heart-stirring testimony himself. Mary, if you'd have heard it, you'd have been in tears. It broke me up. I cried. It was such a blessing and an honor to get to be able to hear him ask for prayer and bless the name of the Lord for what's going on here. And so tonight, at the end of the message, we're going to get back in those little circles again. And we're going to pray together. We're going to love on each other because we live in a world of hurt. We live in a, in a world of confusion. Now, I'm going to tell you this, and normally I, don't, I, don't, I, I never try to promote a message. I really don't even know exactly how the message is going to go this Sunday. But part two is coming up. And I can tell you this, I, because of some of the things that I've witnessed since then. If you thought Sunday was hot, they better have the AC on 50 when we get in here on Sunday. Because the heat is going to get turned up. And you may think I'm joking, but I'm not backing down from the enemy and his work going on in this country right now. It is time for the church to take a bold stand on the Word of God, stand in love, but expose the darkness that is there and the demons that are working. And you know what? They're not working in private anymore. They're coming out on the main stage. They're coming out, on, they're coming out at the Grammys. Can I get an amen? I mean, they're coming out everywhere, and it's like, in your face, Christian. Well, I got a word on Sunday morning. I've got to, it's building right now. My blood is boiling in the Holy Ghost right now. Just thinking about preaching on Sunday morning. It was really hard to try to get my mind grasped together this week to be able to bring a, a midweek message because we do need prayer for our nation. Now, something I believe I know the reason why. I'll state it on Sunday. Why? That we've seen the enemy raise up his head like we've seen in the last few days. There's a reason for that. And I'll make you aware of that. So I want, you to, I want you to be praying that God will help us on Sunday, each part of the service. And also I want to encourage you um, that on Sunday evening after our service, we're going to have a service Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. We're supposed to have a baptism. We're supposed to have people get baptized. I don't know if we've got any that's going to be baptized or not, but I studied in baptism already this week. And what that means in Romans chapter 6, we'll talk from baptism a few minutes, and then we're going to go over to the other side in the Family Life Center, and we're going to fellowship one with another. That's biblical, by the way. And we're going to fellowship, and we'll have some games for some kids. So if you would like to be a part of planning some games for some kids... Or think of some. Please do so. If you have kids, you know what games they like. Um, we need to have that time. Matter of fact, my, my youngest son, Coulter, he said yesterday at school, he said, Dad, is Sunday night whenever we're going to have that fellowship? I said, yes, son. We're going to have church fellowship on Sunday night. And he said, well, I'm looking forward to that. What are we going to do? I said, I don't rightfully know. We're going to have fun. So let's really be praying about that. And you may have some friends that you can bring. And I got a real good idea about during the fellowship of some things that we're going to practice over in the fellowship hall during that time. So I've got Brother Roy. He, he's going to be bringing some barbecue. And his right-hand man there, Murray, is going to be bringing some ribs. 
okay? But you've got to bring something too because there ain't enough ribs to go around with everybody. Me being preacher, I'm bringing chicken. And I'm going to fix that chicken on the smoker that the church bought me a few years ago for Christmas. So it's going to be fun. You don't want to miss it. You just bring a dish. You bring chips. You bring whatever you eat for a tailgate party. Bring it on Sunday night. We're going to have good fellowship. and We're going to have prayer time. You're going to get a good message. And then I'm going to spring the surprise on you right in the middle. It'll be unlike anything you've been a part of. It's going to be fun. Amen. I'm glad that I can have fun in the house of God. Amen. How about, how about, let's all praise the Lord just a minute. Amen. Is he worthy of our praise? He's been good to you this week. He's put food on your table. Your lights are on. You've got breath in your body right now. You ought to use it to magnify the Lord. Amen. How about we just all shout hallelujah. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Now just remain standing. Ephesians chapter 6, familiar passage of Scripture. I used it a few weeks ago, but we're going in a totally different direction tonight. And I feel like it is the need for the hour. Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 10. And verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of Of his might. I like that. I mean, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That lets us know in our mortal flesh, we're not very strong. Then he says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of what? Faith wherewith you shall be able to quench what? All the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth, what? Boldly. To make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in bonds. And therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And all God's people said. Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you can tonight. As I begin to ponder these things. I said something. That correlates with the 19th verse that Paul said, And for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. I believe this. I believe it's scriptural. That real gospel preaching will grow stronger as we approach the rise of the Antichrist. His spirit is already at work and has been. But I believe that gospel preaching will get bolder. I believe that the churches that take a firm stand in God's word will blossom in that hour. I believe that the spirit of God will grow stronger in the believer as we surrender more of our life to the Lord. It's going to take a surrender. It's going to take us waving the white flag of our soul and say, Jesus, here I am. Take all of me. I give it all. And I begin to think about how are we going to prepare for this time? How are we going to prepare? We we begin a revival in a few days. And this revival, we host this meeting. Matter of fact, I 
I had a fella ask me how much is this going to cost, and I give him a pretty good figure. He gave a donation to the meeting. That would help. You know what that tells me? That people see the need for revival. People not only see the need, they feel the need for revival. I don't know about you, but I feel like our church is in revival already. I, I, I've seen our numbers in, in the middle of winter, but thank God that the cold weather ain't been around much here lately. But I've seen our numbers rise. I've seen our, our services outside of Sunday morning grow. And I see people excited about what's going on, and I hear them talking about the excitement. And didn't my brother Edis Dockery do a good job I'm telling you, he's God's man. God laid him right on my heart. And I called Kyle and asked him. I said, hey, brother. I said, you okay with Eddie speaking? He said, sure. I said, God laid him on my heart. He shares the same desire that we share here. Matter of fact, he'd love to be here. But he's got to work where he's at. But I began to think about what is it really going to take for us to be the Christians that God has called us to be in these last days. And my mind goes back to a little squint-eyed man that couldn't see, that prayed at these altars, anointed people at these altars, and never missed a time in the prayer room. A man that prayed at a rock that we have out in the lobby for years and years and years. And the hours could not be counted at the time that he fellowshiped with God himself on that rock. My mind goes back to the words that he would say often before he left. He'd be praying I'll just be honest with you. If you ever got near Leonard Mayfield while he was praying, you stopped your praying and you listened to him pray. Amen. Because that man was going to teach you something. Yes, Let me tell you the words that he said, Lord, it's getting dark down here. Lord, it's getting dark down here. How many of you men heard those words? Oh, when I lay down at night, sometimes I hear Leonard Mayfield's voice. I still have messages saved on my phone that Brother Leonard left me. That man was a man of prayer. He lived in prayer. He breathed in prayer. He preached in prayer. He prophesied in prayer. That man was about prayer. And for us to be able to be the men and for us to be able to be, or you to be able to be the women, then we're going to need to sacrifice our time to prayer. Amen. Half this day today I've spent in prayer. You know why? Because I need it. This church needs it. Our nation needs it. We need to be in prayer. The gospel records the words that Jesus spoke in prayer. Thanking God for his revelation in Matthew chapter 11, 25, and then in Luke 10, 21. It also recorded in Jesus praying before raising Lazarus from the dead in John chapter 11. In John chapter 12, you'll find where he's praying, Father, glorify your name. It was his prayer in John 17. And then three prayers in the Garden of Gethsemane. Three prayers that he prayed on the cross. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And there's a lot of people, they're just living a life of, of sin and of hell, and they don't really know what they're doing. Amen. Romans chapter 10 and tells us, how shall they hear without a preacher? We need a preacher that'll preach. He prayed, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In Matthew 27, 46 and Mark 15, 34. 
And then he prayed in Luke 23, 46, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Other references to Jesus praying include at his baptism in Luke chapter 3. Not only that, there was a regular time that he would withdraw from the crowds and pray according to Luke 5, 16. And that's when he went into the wilderness to pray. You'll find him praying in a boat. You'll find him praying in a garden. You'll find him praying on the mountain. You'll find him praying in the wilderness. You'll find him praying at the river. Praise God, Jesus was a man of prayer. Matter of fact, after healing people in the evening, Mark chapter 135, he prayed. Before walking on the water, he prayed in Matthew 14, Mark 6, and John 6. Before choosing the 12 in Luke chapter 6, you'll find that he prayed. Before Peter's confession, he prayed. And at the transfiguration in Luke 9, he prayed. Jesus prayed. Boy, I feel prayer right now. Somebody's praying for me. Thank God. May we tap in to prayer tonight. And in addition, Jesus, he said prayers before feeding the multitudes. And then at the Last Supper, he prayed. And then, bless God, at the Supper of Emmaus, he prayed. R.A. Torrey said that Jesus prayed early in the morning as well as at night. He prayed both before and after the great events of his life and that he prayed when life was unusually busy. Would you agree with me that we pray before the big events in our life? And we that know God pray before the simple meal that we eat that God provides on the table. Many of us pray before we reside for the evening. And many of us pray when we rise up the next morning. And many of us pray before we go into something that we enjoy. Whether it's fishing or a ball game or a race, we pray. Why? Because we know that from the Bible that God's Son Himself gave us the outline of holy prayer. Amen. Oh, my. We pray before a service. We pray in the service. We pray in the middle of the service. We pray at the end of the service. We pray, thank God, because we believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Oh, Tori said, I must pray, pray, pray. I must put all my energy and all my heart into prayer. Whatever else I do, I must pray. In our text, in the 18th verse, you'll find that it says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Notice the alls. The first one I see is all prayer. All prayer. Always. With all prayer. And then the Bible says, with all perseverance and all saints. There's a lot of alls in there. Those alls are are piling up of strong words, prayer, supplication, perseverance. Note uh, once more the strong expression, watching thereunto. When you look that up, watching thereunto, it literally means uh, being sleepless. We go to the book of Isaiah and you go to Other Old Testament books, you'll find there's watchmen. And where are those watchmen at? They're on the wall. My dad used to tell me about how that he would have to watch at night in the military and said it was real hard to stay awake. And if you went to sleep and you got caught, you got in trouble. Well, let me tell you, there's a lot of so-called churches And there's a lot of so-called preachers and pastors and bishops that have gone to sleep on God and they're not even waking up. Listen to me tonight. America has gone to sleep. But I'm so glad, thank God, that we've still got the prayer bell of heaven that will wake up the dead. And when the church of the living God gets right with the living God, then we'll be able to pray in a way that wakes up the rest of the people that have gone to sleep on God. Oh, it's going to take us spending some time in prayer. It's going to take us... 
staying awake at night. It's going to take us getting up in the morning. Can I be honest with you? I don't have no trouble praying at night. But for me to wake up early in the morning and for me to try to pray, it's hard for me to keep my eyes open. Not that I pray with them open all the time, but a lot of times I do. Well, when do you do that? A lot of time I'm driving. I don't think God wants me shutting my eyes. And some of y'all follow me and act like I, I, I have got my eyes shut. I remember Scotty Baker texted me one time and said, I didn't know there's that much real estate between here and Peachtree. I said, what do you mean? He said, you're all over the road. We laugh about it. But Paul realized the natural slothfulness of a man and especially his slothfulness in prayer. How seldom do we really pray through? Amen. Now, I want, to, I want to be frank with you tonight. There's sometimes people have to pray through it, church. There's sometimes. But they sometimes... That people don't know when to pray. Am I, am I, are you hearing me? I mean, after everybody's been prayed for in the church, then somebody comes up and wants to be prayed over. I don't know if that prayer gets answered. I mean, because there's a stirring of the Spirit of God. And when that Spirit is moving, that's when people need to move. And, and I, I mean, all of us have probably been guilty at it at some point that we didn't move when God wanted us to. And when we don't move when God wants us to, sometimes we miss the boat. Sometimes we don't get what God has. Do you remember the man whenever he laid there beside the pool and every time that the waters were stirred, he tried to get in, but he couldn't. Somebody else got in before him. And they got their healing. I wonder how many times in the house of God that God has something for us, but because of our lack of faith, we don't move when the Holy Spirit is speaking to us. How seldom we pray through. What are you saying? I'm saying we need to pray through at home. We won't have no trouble at church. Amen. We need to pray through in the, in the closet. We need to pray through in the bathroom. We need to pray through at the bedside. At your altar on the mountain, wherever it's at. I, I don't know where yours is at. I only know where mine is. Right. But let me tell you something. If we'll pray through there, we won't have no trouble when we get to God's house. Amen. 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 You want another Leonardism? A Leonardism, right here's one. Stay prayed up, packed up, and ready to go up. Amen? That's, that's it. How often the church, an individual believer, gets so close right on the verge of a great blessing. And then we abort the prayer. Abandon it. Leave it. We need to be sleepless under prayer. That prayer burns in our hearts, in our minds, in our soul because we need constant, persistent, sleepless, overcoming prayer in this day that we live in. First of all, why do we need to pray? Why? How to pray? Why are we going to do this? Greg, I'm going to tell you why. Because there's a devil. There is a devil. He's not the big bad wolf. He's not the boogeyman. He's the devil. He's the serpent. He's Slewfoot. He's the dragon. He's the beast. Let me tell you something. He is evil. He, he's a devil. He's cunning. He's mighty. He never rests. He's ever plotting the downfall of the child of God. And if the child of God relaxes in prayer, the devil will succeed in ensnaring him. Look at verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, I want to tell you, you'll probably hear this on Sunday, but I don't care if you like it or not. It doesn't bother me a bit because it's the truth. When you see half of the elected officials at the State of the Union address stand up and applaud murder, abortion, and clap for it, and the man that's leading our country say he's going to turn it all around and abortion will be back. Let me tell you something. 
that man's going to stand in judgment. And everybody that applauded and everybody that stood and those that watched their television and applauded and clapped, yes! I'll tell you, it's appointed unto man wants to die. And after this, the judgment, it's coming. There won't be no time then to repent. But ladies and gentlemen, we are in a real battle. We're in a wrestling match. We're in a fight. We're in a war. And that's why he said, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the, in the evil day. That evil day is coming. We must be prepared. How are we going to be prepared, preacher? Prepare us. I'm trying. Pray. I want to tell you something. You stand, when you stand in judgment, there will not be one elected official of the United States government be able to help you. No. Matter of fact, they won't be one red-blooded Baptist preacher, Pentecostal preacher, Presbyterian pastor, bishop. There will not be one that can help you. You better make your calling and election sure. You better make sure your sins are under the blood. And there's no doubt in your mind if you die where you're going because that's how close we are to this day. Amen. We see the different parts of the Christian's armor. We're to put it on to stand against the devil. And Paul brings it all to a climax in the 18th verse telling us that we must add prayer. Think about it. In other words, we can put on the armor of God, but if we don't pray it on. Roger Duncan, when he wrote out the little message from this text about praying on every article of armor. If you've got trouble with the enemy, you've got trouble in your family, trouble in your marriage, trouble in your mind, trouble in your soul, pray it on. Trust in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. James brings this out forcibly in the fourth chapter and the second verse of his epistle when he said this, You have not because you ask not. You have not because you ask not. Now, these words contain the secret of the poverty and powerlessness of the average Christian. What are we asking? Are we asking? Are we asking things just, just for our, our flesh to be gratified? Or are we asking the things that Jesus, he said, pray not my will, but thy will be done. And when we pray in accordance to the will of God, then God answers every prayer that we ask. It's that simple. See, we don't make the progress that we need to make or could make as a believer, as a church, as a ministry, because we're not asking. And I don't know about you, but I hate asking people for stuff. I hate it. I despise it. But you know what I found out? If I try to do everything myself, it ain't near as good. There are people that are called to do certain things that are called to help. And if I don't allow them to take part in that, and I just say, well, if I want to get done, I'll just do it myself, then I am robbing them of a blessing. And, and it, let me tell you, it takes more than a pastor to operate a good ministry. It takes more than two pastors to operate a good ministry. It takes every single member of the church or a tender being willing to do something for God's kingdom that he's placed you in. Amen. And the only way we're going to be able to do that is say, God, I'm going to ask you because we need this. We need this as a church. I, I need this. As, you might be a, a husband and say, God, I need this. You, you may, as a wife, you may need something. God, I, I need this. As a family, you might say, Lord, I, I need this. We have not because we ask not. Neglect of prayer. You have not because you ask not. And 
many a minister, they don't see fruit in their ministry. And again, God answers neglect of prayer. You still have not because you ask not. It may be a Sunday school teacher. If you're a Sunday school teacher and you want your class to grow, and maybe it's because you just haven't asked in the right way. Maybe it's something not only for you, maybe it's not for the church, maybe it's for America. You think of God's people in America ask God for a revival? Do you think he'd send it? I do. But we got to ask him. We got to ask him for it. We got to be serious about asking. We got to be able to push, push some meals back and say, God, I really want revival. God, I'm, I'm praying. You may, not, you may not like your governor, but you're going to pray for him. You may not like your president, but you're going to pray for him. You're going to pray. And some, even like over there, and I think it's in Psalms. Let his days be short, and his days in office few. Sometimes that has to be the prayer. You know, I was talking to a fellow one time, an old preacher, and it was, it was, it was. I don't even know if I was pastoring at the time. I was telling him about church problems and talking to him about that, and he said, "Just remember this: there's no church problem too bad that a good funeral can't fix." Now that's strong. Now, you get a hold of that. That was a wise man that spoke that. There, there are things that, that, that happen in the church when God's people are praying in God's will that God moves things out of the way. And sometimes it's even people. The third reason that I see for this constant, persistent, sleepless, overcoming prayer is those men whom God set forth as a pattern of what he expected Christians to be. That's us. Did you know God expects us to be a certain way? And the, the apostles regarded prayer as the most important business of their lives. I've always thought that it was preaching. Boy, God's speaking to me. It's going to be prayer. And, and some people, you go to the sixth chapter of the book of Romans, and so, that, that, that there is a crowd out there that thinks that once they are saved, they can do anything that they want to do in this world and please their flesh. And the more that they sin, the more grace they get, and they keep sinning, and more grace, and they say, that keeps me closer to God. That is heresy. Apostle Paul said, God forbid it. Once we've been saved, we've been changed, and now we live for the Lord. We're dead to sin. That relationship with sin has been broken. We're separated from it. Oh, thank God. We, we have, have got to understand that we as Christians must live a holy life under the Lord. Now, you hear me good. It ain't your holiness. It's His. But you're going to walk in that path of holiness, that path of righteousness, as David said, for His name's sake. When, when the responsibilities of the early church crowded in upon them, they called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, Is it not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables? Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, but we. John David, you know where I'm going with this. But we. Those that had had the call of God on their life, they said, but we will give ourselves continually Amen. to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. Amen. If God's preachers would learn to bow their knees again 
and pray again. Continually pray. Oh, God, help me to pray more. If we want more power, we'll spend more time in prayer. Oh, if we want to see the provisions of God more, we'll spend more time in prayer. Prayer is the key. It is evident from what Paul wrote to the churches and to individuals about praying for them that very much of his time and strength was given to prayer. In Romans 1, 9, For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. In Ephesians 1, 15 and 16, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Colossians 1, 9, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you may be filled with the knowledge and of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Where's the spiritual understanding going to come from? Prayer. Where's the wisdom going to come from? Prayer. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 10, Night and day pray exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. How do we increase our faith? He just said it. Pray. Pray. 2 Timothy 1 verse 3, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Don't you know that somebody told Paul, Jesus prayed night and day. He's praying. You know, when you look at all the mighty men of God outside of the Bible, mighty men of God, every mighty man of God, every mighty woman of God that's ever been mentioned, they were Christians who were dedicated to much prayer. Oh, they've differed from one another in many things. But in this one thing, they've all been alike. Prayer. How are we going to change Hayesville, Hawassi, Blairsville, Murphy, Andrews, Robbinsville, Franklin, Blue Ridge, Morganton, Mineral Bluff. How are we going to change Peachtree, Tusquiddy, Hog Creek? How are we going to change Bethabara, Shooting Creek? How are we going to change it? How are we going to change Fires Creek, Black Gap, Carter Cove? How are we going to change Winchester Cove? I'm going to tell you how we're going to do it. How are we going to change Martin's Creek? How are we going to do it? One word. Prayer. It'll be people that will say, you know what? I believe what God's Word says. If, you, if you'll receive what I've preached tonight to you and say, you know what? I'm going to take hands with the pastor. We're going to pray. I, I, read a, I read a story a while back about this, about this preacher, and he, and, he got, and he got hired at this large church, Pastor Kyle. And, and I'm, I mean, the place had oh, 2,000 or so people. I don't remember exact numbers. I mean, and in the midweek service, they, they, they just, I mean, it'd be unbelievable at the people that would show up. The pastor that built the church, he retired, and here came in this other pastor. And God pressed on his heart to come together and pray. Matter of fact, he told his church where all those hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people were gathering. 
We're not going to be having a normal service. We're going to pray. A handful showed up to pray. A few weeks later, a few more came. More came. They started having, Brother Hodge, more prayer meetings. And the church began to add to its membership daily. And when it was prayer. I've often wondered if, if, if a church in the mountains decided we're, we're just going to pray. That scares me, Pastor. If we come in here on Sunday and just said, well, we're going to pray today. Will you be honest? Does it scare you too? Would people, like you'd be scared people would just leave? No singing. No preaching. No, we're just going to pray. That shouldn't scare us. That should excite us. You know what the first church did? There wasn't nobody preaching. Matter of fact, they were scared to preach without prayer. Peter couldn't even tell the truth before the prayer. Are you with me? I mean, he couldn't even, he couldn't even be acknowledged with the Lord until he spent a lot of time in Boy, but after they prayed, Peter was a changed man. Peter said, I don't care if they kill me or not. Lock me up, doesn't matter. I'm going to preach. I'm going to preach till I die. Doesn't matter anymore. If First Free Will Baptist Church gets to the point that we're praying, and we're seeking God. And we push everything else to the side. Hey, we got the best music of any church in North Georgia and Western North Carolina. I believe. I believe we got the best music. I believe we got the best preaching. Don't you believe that? We got the best preaching. <laughs> believe it. I believe we have the Spirit of God in our church. Stronger than other church. Listen, we'll do news flash there's a lot of people that's leaving Pentecostal churches to come here because they say there's more of the power of the Holy Ghost here than there is in the church where I came from <laughs> praise the Lord <laughs> but let me tell you we don't have a monopoly on the Holy Ghost I can tell you that Amen. we want him to move help us convict us let us draw closer to him use us When you stand before the Lord, you're not going to stand there as a Baptist. You're going to stand there as a Pentecostal. No. You're going to stand there as someone who's saved or someone who's lost. That's it. I'm glad I'm saved. And you know, after all these years, God's still teaching me how to pray. How to pray. I'm, I'm trying to quit right now. I really am trying to quit. Another thing that God is speaking to me about. Is about not only giving my time in prayer. But giving what he's given me away to others. If You, you know, if you, if you know somebody. That wants to play a mandolin. I, I want to bless them with a mandolin. It was given to me. Probably got another one I can give away. If there's a young man or a young girl that wants to play guitar, I can't play all the guitars I've got. I just want to give them away. You know why? You know how you know how I learned that from? David Crow. Nobody has to know about it. I just want to give it to somebody. 
I like that song the Primitive Quartet sang, Fallen Leaves. There's a line in that song that says, The only thing you take is what you gave away. And you know what? I want First Free Will Baptist Church to be able to give more away this year than we ever have before to make sure that every person around this globe has an opportunity to come know Jesus like we do. Maybe God will even use us to help them learn how to pray. Amen. Tonight, I, I want us to come pray. Listen, there, there, there's people. Miss Vicki Forrester needs our prayers. Joe, Uncle Joe needs our prayers. Claudette Maston needs our prayers tonight. Harold Ingram had his surgery today and come out well. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Took out part of his colon. He's good. LB needs our prayers. He's having diverse articulitis issues. He's so sick this evening. I talked to him. And when you get into your group to pray, I want you to share what's on your heart tonight. And let's pray. Let's pray for revival. Let's pray for God to move like he's never moved. Let's touch heaven because heaven's just awaiting to touch us. I love you tonight. If you're in this section, all you females can get right over here and you men can get right here. These two sections right here. This section can go over this side and this section can go over there. And we'll have a women's group over there. Men's group right here. Men's group here. And come together. Talk to each other. It'll bless you to do it. Come on around, gentlemen. God bless you.
And all God's people shouted, Amen. Oh, give the Lord praise one more time tonight. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for being here this evening. Uh, Brother Curtis, you going to show that real quick there? Just, just before we leave, this won't take less than 60 seconds. But the 60 seconds don't start till he does. <laughs> That, that well was drilled relatively close to Mount Everest in, in January. Today we keep a food program for the children here in villages. You can see they are very poor. Because they, they didn't have to go very deep to get water there, they took the extra people. money that we sent them and they fed the whole village. That was there. And Isn't that great? You can see here. Praise the Lord. My bike is there. Here's our orphanage in Uganda. Pray about everything. Read your Bible daily. Be thankful and grateful in all things. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What you're seeing now is Pavel Klippa in Romania. Here's some pictures that he shared um, with us. It's been 10 degrees over there with snow. And they've been taking care of the Ukrainian refugees and ministering the gospel to them. Look at that. Just taking busloads of, of people in. A lot of children. Now, I want to tell you, because, because of you and because you're giving to the Lord, you're touching people around this world. And I didn't have any of Honduras to get, to, to get back up here, but some of you followed Chad and Andre on Facebook and seen, well, they were just over there last week and got to be with some of those kids. We gave backpacks. To, they, they gave backpacks to the kids from church. And they were thrilled. They weren't Naki. They weren't Reebok. They were no name. They gave them those backpacks, and those kids acted like they had won the lottery. And that's what that's what First Free Will Baptist Church is being a part of. And there's others as well. But I wanted to be able to share that with you tonight. Amen. To God be the glory and the praise. Amen. All right, let's stand our feet all over the house. Remember on Sunday morning, be praying for the service. And also that evening will be regular time, 6 o'clock. And we're going to we'll try to get Curtis to set us something up in there where we can watch part of the game. And uh, not only that, we're going to have uh, food. So please bring something, fellowship. And uh, we got basketball goals in there now, huh? Back in there. We got them outside and inside now. So we, we and, I, and I appreciate, um, I just appreciate Chris Moorhart and Brother Johnny Early for helping put those things together because the first one took us about six hours. And that was with power tools. He said you didn't have to say that. But uh, harder than you think. Also, I wanted to report Dr. Weisenberger. He is back home. Amen. And his surgery. Amen. So everybody bring something on Sunday. Bring prayer with you on Sunday morning. You got anything, Lucas? If you signed up for Valentine's, we're expecting you to be there, and that's going to be 6 o'clock this Saturday. This Saturday night, 6 o'clock. Mr. Wallace. Produce tomorrow. Produce tomorrow. Yeah. Amen. All right. Produce tomorrow. Let's get our hands up in there. Let's exercise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Be safe and good night.